Tonight, big news from Apple's WWDC keynote, plus Microsoft's elusive start button. And Tizen goes to Russia. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 99 for Monday, June 2nd, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to our top story. Hmm, let's see, what could that be? Big shocker, it's WWDC. Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference kicked off this morning with a keynote address from CEO Tim Cook and his team. No hardware announcements, all software updates today, but we got a preview of the next version of OS X, which has been named Yosemite, plus iOS 8, and even a new programming language for developers called Swift. Joining us now to talk more about the big takeaways from today's keynote is 9 to 5 Max senior editor Mark Gurman, who's been up since, I don't know, before dawn, let's call it, to cover the show from Moscone Center in San Francisco. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Thanks it's, for having me. It's going well. Thanks for being with us. I know it's been a very long day for you, a very exciting day. Uh, it's a developers conference, of course, so there wasn't any new hardware, and besides some mumbles and grumbles from people who just really, really hope that developers' conferences will have hardware. A lot of software announcements. What are you most excited about? I know you're already uh, running Yosemite, and thank goodness Skype works on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of hardware, I was, the, I was one of the ones who said that hardware uh, would probably be there. I, I guess it was pushed back, but we can uh, wait a few months for that. Uh, I really liked uh, some of the announcements. iOS 8 seems like a significant update. Uh, they're overplaying it a bit, calling it the biggest release since the, the App Store. Um, there's not a whole lot new going on. It's mostly just catching up with Android in some respects and moving forward in others. 10.10 um, .10 looks very nice. It's exactly what I was expecting. Mostly Mavericks, but with a new iOS-like skin. Not as dramatic or as uh, stark as iOS 7, but getting there. Some of the new icon designs, uh, some of the other new functionality. You mentioned catching up with Android. That was something that I kept hearing uh, over and over uh, during the keynote. Google, Android's been doing this for years, that sort of thing. So we've got things like installing third-party keyboards, for example, on the system level. Does that, does that seem like Apple is loosening up in the post-Jobs era? Is it just the fact that too many people prefer the Android experience because they have more customization options? Well, the thing is with these features catching up to Android, Android has been doing a lot of stuff for years. But the problem, as they, they said on stage and is very well known, is there's lots of security issues, lots of, lots of sluggishness, lots of bugs. And what Apple's doing here is they're coming out and they're bringing feature parity and, and exceeding it. They're you know bringing parity in terms of the concepts, but in terms of the execution, they're far above what the other platforms are offering. But they're doing so without losing the security uh, and the reliability of the platform overall. And uh, to answer your question, we are seeing them in this post-jobs era being um, not as reluctant to answering what developers and, and what customers want. And people are asking for keyboards for years, keyboards improvements. So they basically went for a two-pronged keyboard approach. Okay. They enhanced their own keyboard uh, with the new um, prediction feature, and they enhanced uh, keyboards in general by adding third-party support. So... I think that's a really big deal. You reported uh, uh, quite recently a health book was coming to iOS 8. It was a big exclusive for 9 to 5 Mac, screenshots. We saw something called Health Today. What is different from what you saw previously? So originally the application was called Health Book and it had an interface and an aesthetic like Passbook. Uh, so what they've done is they basically dropped the word book from the end, called it Health, and the user interface is... Uh, is quite different than what was originally imagined. I don't, I don't know why they changed the UI, but I mean, as you can see, it's the same exact functionality. They just cleaned it up a bit, um, differentiating it from Passbook, which I think is a really good idea because it gives people the idea that this is really a big thing. And in people's minds, they understand that they have this Passbook app, but not a lot of people use it. Not a lot of people understand it. So breaking the health functionality away from the whole book concept was probably a smart move on Apple's part. You even tweeted earlier that you thought Apple may have even changed gears and renamed the whole thing because it had been leaked. And some people oh, said, no, nah, Apple can't work that fast. What do you think? You know, the people who give their opinions, if they don't 
demonstrate knowledge of the company and stories about the company for several years, I mean, how could you take whatever they say at face value? I mean, I'm the one who, you know, produced the complete lion's share of information regarding what Apple announced today. And I'm saying that they changed it up partly and due to the leak. So I'm going to stick to that. I think I know what I'm talking about. And I think people should realize at this point that I know what I'm talking about. Well, especially since you said, hey, it's basically the same thing, packaged a little bit differently. It is exactly the same thing. So let's move on to Swipe. We were talking a little bit before the show. I said I was kind of surprised once we got to the Swipe conversation. I thought that they were already wrapping up the keynote, but Swipe is replacing Objective-C as the new developer code. How in the world did Apple keep that under wraps? So Nobody talked it, it, about this. Yeah, so they've been working on that for, for several years, and they did a good job keeping that under the radar. And, you know, it's a new programming language, which is always big. People talk about Python, Objective-C, but, you know, this really came out of left field, like you said. I think the bigger story here, besides the programming being easier, all the new features for developers, is that... Basically, it's like introducing a new language. People, nobody has this language. So this gives the opportunity for Apple to vastly grow their developer base. People might say, oh, I don't want to have to learn Objective-C and all these new programs. But everyone, even the, you know, the most veteran developer is going to want to relearn how to program their applications in Swift. So it gives a new even playing field for everyone to jump in at the same time to develop applications for Apple's platform. And this reboot of creating applications for iOS is going to start like a whole new gold rush, just like when people learn how to create apps for the first time seven, eight years ago with the uh, first version of the App Store. Someone in our chat room is saying, Sarah called it Swipe. I see. I'm, I'm confused. We've got Swift. we got Swipe keyboards. You could forgive me for being You're a tired. Little... <laughs> yes, right, exactly. It's been a long day. All right, so let's uh, move on to uh, OS X Yosemite, which you are already uh, running a version of. We've got iCloud Drive. A lot of people say, ooh, that's Apple's Dropbox killer or Google Drive killer. Dropbox is an established product. Does Apple really have a chance at at digging into some of their user base? I would say so. Um, I'm considering or will consider using uh, iCloud Drive instead of Dropbox. I'm a happy Dropbox user now. Will they affect the companies? Maybe Google Drive, but I don't think Dropbox can be affected. Dropbox has pivoted itself into more so of a platform. Lots of developers take advantage of the Dropbox API. It's well known. It's robust. It's an entire company built upon the concept of storing your files and sharing them and synchronizing them between devices. So I don't think that's ever going to be taken away. I don't think iCloud Drive will ever be as strong as that. Quite frankly, it's just one feature within one application, within one Apple platform, or to both of Apple's platforms that it syncs across. So I don't think even Apple can compete with an entire company based around the similar functionality. So but it's a great addition. Yeah. People have been asking for it for, for since iCloud launched. And this is part of the whole, you know, Apple answering what the consumers and the developers want. So I think it's a fantastic move. It's really a no brainer. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's a killer or not, it's something that Apple needed. Let's talk about Craig Federighi for a second. Jokes about his hair side, he's he actually made a lot of his own jokes on stage. He's the senior vice president of software engineering at Apple, and he actually had the most stage time today. The crowd seemed to love him. He was up there four or five times, and there were even some tongues wagging that Federighi's kind of the obvious next CEO choice. What do you think about that? And if so, how far out would something like that be? So, you know, WWDC is Craig Federighi's event. He runs iOS, OS X, and everything that goes under that. And that's what the whole event was about today. So it would make sense that he would be, you know, emceeing uh, the majority of the event. It's his operating systems. Um, in terms of a CEO successor, I think it's quite early to call for a successor to Tim Cook. Um, unless they keep not releasing new hardware, even though they're saying they're going to. Um, but I don't even think Federighi would be the guy. He's the software engineering guy. Apple needs someone who has vast management of entire companies. See, you know, Federighi, he started off running um, OS X and then it quickly expanded to iOS. But, yeah, I don't think he's a CEO candidate. I don't, quite frankly, I don't think there's a CEO candidate um, even being considered right now. Tim Cook has a long time at Apple ahead of him. 
Yeah, he probably just knows that Federighi's great on stage and so uses that to his advantage as well. And that's fine. I mean, it's his products. Federighi knows those operating systems better than anyone at the company. Something interesting on the note of people working at Apple high up there is there were a few new faces on stage that we haven't seen before. So they're kind of expanding their public portfolio of people who work at the company uh, which might even be good for investors who are curious about succession planning and, and looking down the road. Lots of the gimmicks and jokes on stage and presentations and some like the messages, demos and threads really, you know, brought some faces and some voices to other people in the company that we haven't seen before. Were you surprised that we did not hear one peep about the Beats acquisition, which has closed? Apple announced it on Friday that it was a done deal besides a quick phone call to Dr. Dre. No talk about Beats. You know, I don't think that was very, I don't think it would be fitting to talk about uh, Beats at the acquisition, uh, sorry, the Beats acquisition during the keynote. They already talked a ton about it within interviews, with major publications, the press release, the uh, interview between Q and Ivine at the code conference. I think they really fleshed that out a bit. Maybe we'll hear more about it when the uh, legal stuff is behind them in uh, Q4. But I don't think the developer conference is really a place. I thought it was quite funny that they did the, the Craig plus Dr. Dre call. Um, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it was, yeah they, they found a way to, to, uh, to at least acknowledge it on some level. You mentioned you Absolutely. thought that there was going to be hardware announcements at the show. There wasn't any. Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah. what's your biggest well, takeaway from that? Just not ready yet. Just not ready. Um, see, the thing with competitors like Google and uh, Facebook or whatnot, they're going to announce their intentions to do new products weeks, months, or years in advance. Apple lately has been on this nine-day schedule. They announce a product and they ship it nine days later. Um, so I think they're going to stick to that. And if they're not going to have the product ready to go today, tomorrow, or within nine days, it's not going to happen. And there's no reason for them to to take all this time to develop a product and then push it out too soon. It's not their MO. Mark Gurman is the senior editor over at 9to5Mac. Thanks so much for being here. And hopefully your day is winding down and you can take a nap. I'm good. Thank you so much. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And before you go, let people know where they can follow your work online. Uh, you can read my stuff at 9to5Mac.com and I'm uh, at Mark Gurman on Twitter. Thanks so much, Mark. All right, take care. Enjoy take the care. rest of the week at WWDC. All right, moving on. In other Apple App Store news, last year, the company had pulled several Bitcoin wallet apps from the App Store, but gave no official stance on exactly what it's going to allow for apps based on that virtual currency. Well, the company finally added a new rule for Bitcoin apps that states... Apps may facilitate transmission of approved virtual currencies, provided that they do so in compliance with all state and federal laws for the territories in which the app functions. So now this only applies to apps that facilitate transfer of Bitcoin currency itself, but at least it's a definite stance developers did not have until today. But enough about Apple. What's new with Microsoft? I can hear you asking. Over at ZDNet, Mary Jo Foley reports that Microsoft won't be delivering a new start menu for Windows 8 with its upcoming Windows 8.1 Update 2, citing sources familiar with Windows information. Previous word had Microsoft looking to make a new mini start menu, part of a second update to Windows 8.1, and that's still on track for release this August. But it seems that Microsoft's operating systems group is holding off on delivering the Microsoft-developed start menu until the next major release of Windows, which is dubbed Threshold and may end up being called Windows 9, but not expected to be released before April of next year. So the start button issues continue. It wasn't really a great day to announce new non-Apple hardware, but Samsung decided to do it anyway. The company's first smartphone running on Tizen, which is its own operating system that it's developing with Intel, will be the Samsung Z. The Samsung Z will be on sale exclusively in Russia sometime in the third quarter of this year with a rollout to other countries down the road. Samsung has already released several cameras and smartwatches that are running Tizen and will release software tools for programmers to build apps for a Tizen-based TV at its Tizen Developers Conference, 
which coincidentally is also happening in San Francisco this week. Well played, Samsung. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being with us. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Questions, comments, and feedback all suggested and welcomed. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.